Today, of course, is Rosary Sunday, and on this day, the feast is celebrating is celebrating that great devotion, and it was set up um, by Pope Pius, Pope Saint Pius V, in order to celebrate the victory of Lepanto, in which the uh, Christendom was saved by fighting a naval battle against the Muslim forces in 1571. Pius V, of course, had, had asked the, all of Rome to pray the rosary together, and it did. And uh, that victory was obtained despite the overwhelming odds against the Christian forces because of the power of Our Lady's intercession. Now, I know I've told that story to all of you before, so today I wanted to tell you a different story of the power of the Most Holy Rosary. That is, I want to tell you about a story that comes to us from much more recent times, 1884 to be exactly, and the city being that of Pompeii in Italy. There was a young girl in the city at that time. Her name was Fortuna Agrelli, and she, in her youth, suffered greatly from three separate illnesses, three illnesses that plagued her by woes of, of, of great woes of her stomach, and also by causing these, these great muscular cramps that caused her unbelievable pain. And uh, her parents, at seeing this, they, how much she was sick, they took her, of course, to see the doctors. And uh, one doctor they would take her to, and he would not be able to, to figure out what was wrong or how to help her out. And they would take her to another doctor, and still no way to, to figure out how to cure the young girl. Every doctor that they went into, they felt bad, they tried their best, but yet they had nothing to offer her in the way of alleviation or in the way of cure for her illness. Well, the family, seeing how much this little girl was troubled by these, these illnesses and having no other recourse to have, they turned to Our Lady for assistance by their prayers. And they began for themselves a novena of rosaries, nine days in a row that they all prayed the rosary together to obtain this cure for the young girl. Well, at the end of the novena, they didn't have any cure whatsoever. And so then they prayed again, a second novena, and still no cure. And then a third novena yet still. And still nothing had alleviated in the young girl's disposition. And one day as she was laying in bed towards the end of that third novena of rosaries, she all of a sudden beheld before her eyes a great vision came to her. There before her was Our Lady, and she was seated, and in her one arm, seated on her lap, was the infant Jesus, and in her other hand she held a rosary, and beside her was St. Dominic on one side and St. Catherine of Siena on the other, the Greek image of Our Lady of the Rosary. And when she saw this, she cried out in joy, and she greeted Our Lady, calling her, she, she said to Our Lady, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, be gracious to me, restore me to health. I have prayed to thee in a novena, but have not yet experienced thy aid. I'm so anxious to be cured. And Our Lady, when hearing this, she looked at the little girl with great tenderness and smiled and she told her that because of the fact she had greeted her in such a manner and called her by a name that was most pleasing to Our Lady, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, she could not refuse the young girl's request. However, she told the girl that in order to obtain her cure, she should make three more novenas of the rosary, and then she will be healed from all her ailments. Well, the little girl told her family what she had seen, and very hastily all of the people of her family began that, that those three additional novenas in honor of Our Lady praying the rosary each day for 27 more days. And at the end of it, lo and behold, the girl was indeed Cured. None of the symptoms remained. She had none of the difficulties any longer, and she was restored to her old, or her, her old former health and and uh, vitality. Well, her lady came back to this young girl and told, and came to her in a vision again, 
and spoke to her and said uh, that she had a message for everybody else to hear as well. And Our Lady told her, whoever desires to obtain favors from me should make three novenas of rosaries and then three novenas of thanksgiving. A total of six novenas consecutively of praying the rosary, 54 days of rosaries, and that she promises to obtain what they desire. Well, this was the very beginning of the great practice of the what is known as the, the rosary novena. This devotion that comes down to us about uh, 150 years later now, uh, that praying for 54 days to Our Lady. And it's such a powerful novena that I want to share it with everybody because it's something we should all remember and all have ready to utilize for our greatest of desires in prayer. Because with the with that novena, it can be one of the greatest sources of consolation and hope for us in obtaining what we need. But why would the Rosary Novena, more than, say, different other devotions and prayers, be particularly so powerful? Well, it's first because of the fact that it uses a devotion most dear to Our Lady, who is the Mediatrix of all graces to us. It uses the Rosary, the very devotion that she herself gave to us. She gave it, of course, to Saint Dominic and proclaimed in doing so that one day through the rosary and the scapular that she would save the world. In fact, it's through this devotion and the devotion to Our Lady in general that many of the spiritual writers, including Blessed Alan de Roche and Saint Alphonsus Liguori, and that they say that devotion to that to the, the devotion to the rosary and to Our Lady is the greatest sign of predestination that somebody can have in their life. Secondarily, the Rosary Novena is so powerful because it helps to eliminate our own deficiencies in prayer. Think about it. We've talked about it before. What are the main deficiencies in prayer that keeps our intentions from being answered the way that we seek after them being done? It's never the fault of God because He is all good and all perfect. But the rather, our prayer deficiencies are our own. They are a lack of, of, of a good intention, which is not what we necessarily hear speak of. And then lack of perseverance and lack of trust. Those are the three main deficiencies that uh, prevent our prayers from being answered. And the Rosary Novena deals with them. So perseverance, for instance, our Oftentimes, when we pray for something, we pray today. We might even pray tomorrow or the next day. But how long do we continually pray for that same end when we don't see those immediate results? Because we're such a society given to wanting what we want now and expecting to achieve it very hastily. Yet with this novena, we have not nine days, not two not three days of like a triduum or nine days like a novena, but rather 54 days consecutively praying the rosary for the very same intention that we ask. It is an investment on our part of time and it's an investment of our part in effort. And sometimes in 54 days, think of how busy your lives can be. At, th at certain times during that 54 day period, it will be hard to remember or to be able to fit your rosary in for that novena. It can be done, but we have to make that special effort in time. So it gives us a level of perseverance and putting forth an investment of our own self and a little bit of sacrifice for us in order to pray well and persevere in that intention. Secondarily, trust. The rosary novena is most geared towards this deficiency in overcoming it, the trust that we have in prayer. We're finite beings. We really operate on what we see and what we sense around us, what we can perceive in our day-to-day -day lives. 
And it's when we ask heaven, which we cannot see regularly with our own eyes, and we ask for the intercession that we have no control over for the granting of, of our desires in that regard, that we most struggle oftentimes with our trust. We think to ourselves, how good, much good does my prayer do? Or is it really going to be heard? Or am I really going to achieve the answer that I, that I need so desperately? Yet with the Rosary Novena, it focuses on overcoming that shortfalling in our, in our limited human nature. Because after we do our first 27 days of petition, we follow it up right away with 27 days of thanksgiving. Even though we haven't seen the answer to our prayers, perhaps, yet we are thanking God and thanking Our Lady for having heard them and granted exactly what we asked for without having seen any proof whatsoever. We're so confident in our prayers that we thank Our Lady for answering them ahead of time. We trust, we abandon it to her and to her motherly and queenly care, and we don't have to worry about it any longer by doing so. This abandonment and trust aids us not only in placing our cares before our lady, but it also alleviating some of that stress and some of that anxiety that might come when we have those most desperate of desires, because no longer is it our burden to bear. We've shed it off of our shoulders. Yes, we'll continue to pray even after the Rosary Novena is done. Yes, we'll continue to do our part in any kind of practical way that may arise that we have to. But I don't have to concern myself with it anymore. I've given it to Our Lady, my mother. She will take care of it. It's no longer for me to worry about. And now I truly have that trust and abandonment that a child has in its own parents. That once they ask for it and their parents tell them, yes, I'll do that, the child no longer worries about whether it will happen or not. They just believe that it will, because their mother or their father has told them so. And so we, as spiritual children of Our Lady, we place it in her care, and we concern ourselves no more with it. A persevering and trusting prayer. What a beautiful thing, and what a great gift to us from heaven to receive such a powerful novena as that as the Rosary Novena. How could such a prayer ever go unheard? We have burdens. We have worries. We have intentions that are most dear to us and most troubling to our own peace of heart. Yet, when we adopt that spiritual childhood all new, and we embrace the devotions that are given to us from heaven itself, what, a more, what more of a beautiful gift to give to Mary and to our Lord than just that. And with that, even though it may not happen in the time frame that I may desire, even though it may not happen in the manner that I foresee it in my mind, and even though I may never, never even see the answer to my prayer in my own life, I now can rest assured with peace of heart that my prayers have indeed been answered, and have been answered by the Queen of Heaven herself. And that when she, the Mother of Christ, stands before her Son with such a beautiful gift of the 54 rosaries prayed in earnest and in trustful nature that he would never turn such an invo uh, uh, would never turn such a intention down but rather would storm that person or that uh, uh, that person with graces or answer our prayers by way of, uh, of sight unseen in terms of healing or whatever intention we have that needs to be answered, nothing can stand in the way of heaven for answering it well. And with that, we go forward each and every day with that same confidence 
um, the little child. You know, that's what it is. The problem is that 